And as you're opening up your Bibles, I want to invite you to be praying for the outreaches that Pastor Diana talked about. Pray for our sweet brother and sister uh, Talmadge and Yvette Ellis that run the, the uh, food truck. And uh, thank you guys. Uh, here's another way you can pray for them. Uh, not this last Saturday or the previous Saturday. No, it was the previous Saturday. It was Mother's Day Saturday. Uh, in the middle of the night, uh, Talmadge and his neighbor have some flashlights that they flash into each other's bedroom windows when somebody's doing something they shouldn't be doing in their yard uh, in the middle of the night. They have cameras and that kind of thing. Well, in the middle of the night, uh, some people were vandalizing and stealing parts of Tal one of Talmadge's food trucks. Oh, he parks it on, on six, 7th on Saturday night so that it will not be in our parking lot on Sunday morning. God bless him. And uh, so the in the middle of the night, last Saturday night, he got this flash in the in the window from his neighbor, and they both uh, chased out there and and uh, chased after these bad the bad guys. Uh, they got shot at twice in the chase, and after the second shot, they decided, hey, this is not worth it any longer. And they called the police, and and uh, the next day about noon, the police showed up. Yeah, go ahead and, and go ahead and start funding the police again. Yeah. Oh, praise the Lord. Uh, and uh, so some of our people uh, heard about that and came together and said, uh, Pastor John, uh, we want to we want to help Talmadge. And uh, and they did, and uh, they are very thankful. <laughs> but we just need to pray for them. And pray God's blessing and favor on their <laughs> business and businesses and and lives and and uh, and in these times of outreach when Talmadge will be bringing his food truck, may the Holy Spirit just be all over that thing, all over them, their friends and family, and uh, the love that this congregation shows to them. Thank you so much for doing that. And uh, praise the Lord. I want to talk to you this morning about living in a Holy Spirit adventure. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh, I believe that as believers, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and what I mean by that is we can be looking forward to the soon coming of our master, his majesty, the Lord Jesus. We Amen. call that the rapture. Amen. But we can also stay busy doing what the Lord wants us to do yep. on a Holy Spirit adventure. Amen? Amen. And uh, in that subject, Helen Keller said it this way, life is either a daring adventure or nothing. Right. <laughs> We want it to be a whole lot more than nothing. And th that's what the Holy Spirit wants for you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the Celtic Christians. Celtic? No, they weren't basketball players. <laughs> the, the, thank you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Celtic Christians. Celtic. The Celtic Christians had an interesting name for the Holy Spirit. If I'm pronouncing it right, they said they the words they used were on Giagglos, which means the wild goose was the name that the Holy Spirit I was just talking about. It. They gave to the Holy Spirit respectfully, lovingly. Kind of a way to start to understand the untamed nature of the Holy Spirit. That that uh, part of the Holy Spirit that's dangerous and unpredictable. Yeah? Come on, come on, you guys. It's okay. Go ahead and breathe. 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 It's okay. It's okay. Uh, we want to put the Holy Spirit in a box. Nope. No way. No 
He will not. He will not go there. He will not. Uh, we want to clip his wings. No. We want to leash him, but he won't go there. He won't. He won't allow it. What he'll do is he'll go someplace else. Yeah. Yeah. To those who will not try to put him in a box. He is inviting you and I on the adventure of a lifetime. Yeah. Hallelujah. Sometimes when we think about a wild goose chase, we think about a, a pointless task with no purpose or desired end. How many of you have ever felt like you've been on a wild goose chase before? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Come on, come on, come on. All of us have, have been on one at one time or another. Praise the Lord. You know what? If you've never been on a wild goose chase, you're living way too safely. Yeah. You're not living dangerous enough. In the name of Jesus, <laughs> with, with love and tenderness, praise the Lord. But when we think about following the Holy Spirit, friends, it's different. It's not a pointless thing. It may not always make sense to us, and especially to us control freaks. <laughs> oh yeah! Yep. Yep. It may not always make sense, but, but, the, but the holiness of our God and the awesomeness of our God uh, doesn't have to make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Some very important information here this morning. I, I trust the Holy Spirit is helping you. And me too, praise the Lord. We fall into that dangerous trap of always wanting to be in control and always having to intellectually analyze. But what happens when we are always intellectually analyzing, we fall into spiritual paralysis. Yeah. Yeah. So friends, just, just right now, before we go any further, just, just say amen in your heart and spirit that, that you want to go on that exciting adventure adventure with the Holy Spirit and it doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to, you don't have to have all the I's dotted or T's crossed. You can just say, Lord, you you point and shoot. Now I'll, I'll do whatever you want me to do. In Jesus' name. Because friends, the first thing that I, the first main point I want to talk to you about this morning is that the Holy Spirit is the best adventurer ever. <laughs> We've had some great adventurers in our in our uh, Americana. We've had our Daniel Boons and our Lewis and Clarks, yeah. our Sacagaweas, yeah, yeah. And, and other great, you know, first time on the moon, yeah. We've had some adventurers, but the Holy Spirit's the best one. <laughs> He, he, he beats them all. He, he, he outranks them all. John chapter 3, verse 8. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Amen. Oh, friends, this is uh, a very important piece of Scripture for us. And Jesus is telling us here that... When we follow the Holy Spirit, we're not always going to know where we're going or what we're going to be doing. In fact, you know what? Uh, a few years back, about 14 or so, when the Holy Spirit said to John and Dot Hagebush to live, to leave Lyndon, Washington and move to Portland, uh, he didn't say anything about Portland Metro Assembly of God Church. He just said, you go to Portland. And we said, okay, Lord, we'll go. We're going right now. You you told us where to go. We're going. It wasn't long after we got here that the assistant superintendent of the Oregon Ministry Network called and said, hey, would you pray about serving as the interim at Portland, an interim pastor at Portland Metro Assembly of God Church? We came and drove around and saw the bullet holes and the stained glass windows and and uh, thought, okay, Lord, if this is what you're saying and directing us to do, then then we're gonna we're gonna be adventurous. We're gonna be we're gonna live dangerously. Yep. And thankfully, <laughs> uh, thankfully, the assistant superintendent said, "Oh, don't worry about those bullet holes. They're all really, really old, and and uh, some of them came from lawnmowers, not from." Firearms. <laughs> Friends, 
uh, God doesn't always give us all the, you know, 900 years of information to scare us to death anyway. Yep. If we knew that far out, what was going to be happening, it is so important that we just say, Lord, wherever you want to go. Lord, I, I just want to hear your voice. I want to, I want to know the promptings of your spirit, and I'll, and I'll follow you. You're right. And I can promise you it will be anything but boring. Praise the Lord and, and thank you. Have you ever have you ever been wowed by anything? I mean, you oh, yeah. stand back and go, <sighs> yeah. Uh, I've been wowed by a few experiences in my lifetime, and friends, it always takes risk and adventure. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Uh, one of those wows in my life was uh, I saw a huge herd of elk in the fall, and and uh, Ken. The, the ends of those antlers had been recently rubbed and they were so bright, it was like they had Christmas lights on all those antlers. It was so, it, this huge herd. And, and typically, you know, the bulls are in the back and they're following along or encouraging the herd along. And it was just awesome, awesome, awesome. I've uh, gone swimming with dolphins and snorkeled with sea turtles. Not <laughs> fun. <laughs> God and I have been able, with our family, to go places and do things I never dreamed possible. And I've been wowed and enjoyed those adventures. But again, it's always a risk. I've snow skied on some of the highest places on Mount Hood and on uh, Whistler up in Canada. Just, just awesome, awesome things and awesome, awesome places. Friends, without the Holy Spirit in my life, uh, you would spell it B-O-R-I-N-G. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Boy. There's some things that I've also seen that I want to tell you about. I, I, I was a big able, I had the privilege of being involved in several Billy Graham crusades. I've seen thousands of people at the, at the invitation grade, uh, just as I am, without one plea. But that thy blood was shed for me as the Billy Graham organization and all those people would sing as those thousands of people come out of the stands and come to the altar to make Jesus the Lord of their lives. Hallelujah. Don and I were part of an outreach, missionary outreach with Dave Reber in the Philippines where over a week of meetings where 3,000 people came to know Jesus as their personal Savior. I've had the privilege of praying for people and witnessing their healing. I've seen people really get saved and baptized in the Holy Spirit with the glorious evidence of speaking in other tongues and, and seen them lit up with the presence of the Lord all over them. Praise the Lord, friends. It has been glorious. i got to tell you a, a very recent one. This last week, I can't tell you how many times I've wanted to quit being involved in the home group at Fox Run. Any, anybody else ever wanted to quit? <laughs> so this last week, one of the men that has just recently started attending the home group at Fox Run, we, we start like we do on Wednesday night with praises. And he said, he raised up his hand and he said, Pastor John, I have a praise. He said, I found a bag of dope on the bus and I didn't use it. I took it home and flushed it down the toilet. <laughs> Hallelujah! Oh, you guys. If that doesn't light your Holy Spirit fire, your wood's all wet, praise the Lord. It is Glorious what the Holy Spirit, what God can do in a life if we even try to stay faithful for a little while. Yep. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What an what a extreme and wonderful blessing. Amen. The Holy Spirit will bring you to and allow you to do incredible things like that. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Or you'll get to watch Him do. That's more accurate. You'll get to see him do incredible and wonderful things. Praise the Lord.
praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Second thing I want you to see this morning. Don't settle for an upside down Christianity. You, you want to follow the Holy Spirit on a life-changing and awesome and exciting adventure and you don't want to settle for anything less than that. Anything less than that is what I call upside-down Christianity. What, what it means is, or maybe a, some partial definition of upside-down Christianity is instead of following the Holy Spirit, you ask Him to follow you. It's not going to work that way. Instead of serving the purposes of God, you want the purposes of God to serve you. Amen. It doesn't work that way. Praise the Lord. Yes. And it is very important that we understand that, that we serve the Master and the Holy Spirit wants to lead us. We, friends, uh, upside down Christianity is, is a self absorbed. Uh, that all about me kind of Christianity, friends, and, and it, it leaves you empty and uh, bored to death in Jesus' name. Good. I want to take you now to Genesis chapter 2 because there's some always some exciting things that we need to see in the Word of God, and, and here's one of them. Verse 19, Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would name them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. One of the first jobs God gave Adam was the naming of the animals. And friends, I think we missed the excitement of this. I think maybe we, we have this idea that God just, just formed this parade in front of Adam. You know, here they come. <laughs> And I want to just say, well, where's the adventure in that? I think it's quite possible, if you'll allow me a little uh, vivid imagination. Uh, I believe God sent and took Adam on lots of adventures where he went out and saw all of these different animals and began to name them. I don't know about you, but I can imagine it was pretty awesome the first time Adam saw a giraffe. <laughs> you know, and he's going, where in the head of this thing up there? Right. Or, or he's, he's at the ocean and he sees different fish come by. And first time he sees a shark or a whale. Yeah. Or, a, or in the air, an albatross. Yeah. Mm. Or a muskrat, you know. Some of those other things, you just wonder. <laughs> but they all display the glory of God, don't they? Yes, they do, Pastor. Yes. There's a huge difference, though. Let me turn you just a little bit here. Between animals in the wild and animals in the zoo. In the zoo, we see safe, tame, protected, predictable. In the wild, we see the uncivilized, the untamed, the uncaged. When you're walking through a zoo and you see a 400-pound gorilla behind a 7-inch thick plexiglass wall, I wonder if we do that to believers. Don't get me wrong. I, I've always loved the church. I've loved the church most of, almost all of my life. I've loved the church. And I don't think we put people in cages intentionally. But I think we are guilty sometimes of trying to take people out of their natural habitat and tame them in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Thankfully, we have people like the Apostle Paul, who was never tamed. Caged, yeah, by, by an evil empire, but never tamed. Hallelujah. And, and many, many others. Mother Teresa's and others never, ever tamed. 
And friends, I think sometimes when we when we do that to our fellow believers, when we try to remove the risk and remove the danger and remove the struggles, we end up putting the behind seven inch thick walls of plexiglass. Because I believe deep inside all of us, we we long for it. And the Holy Spirit puts that, that seed of longing for adventure. He doesn't want us to live tamed behind the walls in a zoo. He wants us to be people that it's okay to have a little adventure, a little danger, a little uh, courageousness. Amen? Amen? And once you've tasted that, then the you can no longer go back to the cage. Yeah. Praise the Lord. The cage opens, friends, and we realize that Jesus didn't die on the cross to keep us safe. Yeah, yeah he, the, the ultimate safety, yes, but, but he wants us to be able to be on the growing edge, on the tip of the spear, as it were. Hallelujah. In order to see the kingdom of God go and grow and do all kinds of wonderful things. <laughs> It's okay to pray for protection. I don't know about you, but I pray for protection for Dodd and the rest of our family almost every day. But I want to ask you, when was the last time you prayed and asked God to make you dangerous? <laughs> when was the last time you prayed and asked God to help you be courageous? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Friends, God is calling us, which is point number three. Are you living dangerously? And, and if you don't like the word dangerous, put the word courageous in there. I think they have a lot of comparisons. Yeah. I think they have a lot of similarities. Yes, they do. God is calling us, ladies and gentlemen. God has called our, our the faithful and our heroes uh, time and memoriam. He's called us to courageousness. He's called us to live dangerously. So let me ask you this morning, are you, are you living too safely? Are you living so safe that you're bored? Hey. Let me ask it to you another way. Is your guardian angel bored with you? Uh, does your guardian angel hope you'll become a little more dangerous? A little more courageous? <laughs> I want to ask you, what about those who have given up their comfort to serve sacrificially and to serve the poorest of the poor. What about those guys who started a dangerous ministry to those caught in the claws of pornography? What about those who lay down their lives to stop human trafficking and human sacrifice, otherwise known as abortion? When did it become only safe to follow Jesus. Friends, I believe the enemy of our souls has been working really hard to get us to think that we should always be safe and never live courageously, never live dangerously. Go ahead and say amen. amen. So friends, it's time. It's time to come out of that, that safety zone. One of my heroes. How many of you are familiar with missionary Jim Elliott? White Elizabeth Elliot, mighty people of God. How many of you know that that uh, Portland was their hometown? Jim, Jim, and I don't, I don't know about Elizabeth because I think they met in Bible College and went to the mission field from there. But Jim grew up in Portland. A song that Steve, anyway, a, a song has been written from the words of Jim Elliot that uh, I, I want to share this great quote by Jim uh, martyred in the in the 50s uh, in South America by uh, the Indian tribe that they were reaching out to Jim Elliot Nate Saint and two others were brutally martyred one day after they thought they had built a relationship with this tribe and they'd landed their plane. And, yeah, and uh, well, it's a powerful, powerful story. But Jim, Jim said this, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep 
to gain what he cannot lose. <laughs> and our, our, our faith in Jesus, you guys, calls us to live courageously like Jim and others. You know what? You may not, you may not go to the jungles of South America, but 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 you will you will help in King School Park this summer. Help the jungle when we do the outreach. And the gangs will show up and we'll serve them and love them. They'll feel the presence of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. The fourth thing that I want you to see, friends, that we've kind of been heading toward and talking about faith in Jesus and boredom do not live together. Amen? Yeah. I, don't, I don't think they live together. In fact, I want to take you and to consider Matthew 19, verse 20. The young man said to him, all these things I've kept from my youth, what do I still lack? From the rich young ruler's perspective, from a worldly perspective, he had everything. Youth, wealth, power, but something was missing. He knew and he felt like something was, myth, was missing. He was bored with his faith. And I think we see the question in the question, we see that, that boredom in the question that he asked Jesus. He was missing that spiritual adventure. His life had become too predictable, too easy, too comfortable. And friends, you and I are in, in that same danger zone from time to time. He lived in a religious cage that was taking its toll on him. And if you find yourself bored with your faith, friends, it's not, it's not God's fault. It's time to get out of the comfort zone and go live courageously and go live dangerously in a fresh new adventure with God. You may know that your sins are forgiven. You may know that you are ready to spend eternity in heaven. You may know all the commandments and have lots of Bible verses memorized. You may be living in the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God, but you may still have that feeling deep in your spirit that something's missing. That rich young ruler represents a lot of believers, I think, from time to time that, that long for something more, that, that know that the Holy Spirit is calling and tugging at them. They just don't know quite what it is yet. Yeah. So friends, don't, don't allow yourself to settle for spiritual mediocrity. Strive for spiritual maturity. Yeah. Grow and let Jesus come and help you. In fact, friends, another way to say it is the Lord himself calls us to walk away from anything that we feel <coughs> brings security or identity outside of our relationship with him. He is calling us, friends, into that place. The rich young ruler was in a cage of financial security. Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, then go sell everything you have and give it to the poor. You'll find treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. But the rich young ruler couldn't part with his money. He wasn't ready to live dangerously or courageously. He wasn't ready to give up his little in order to receive true riches that Jesus was offering him. So let's, let's back up for a moment and compare the rich young ruler to the unpaid 12 disciples. <laughs> they had heard the parables with their own ears. They had seen the miracles with their own eyes. They had drank water that had been turned into wine. They had eaten from the miraculous catch of fish. Yeah. They were there when Jesus overturned the tables and, and walked on water and then ascended into heaven. They had seen it all. I mean, the, the all of the all they had seen it and experienced it. And Jesus then sends them to the far-flung corners of the world. Peter sails to Italy. John ends up in Asia. James, the son of Zebedee, travels as far as Spain. Thomas goes to India. And friends, just like the rich young ruler, God is calling you and I to make the same choice. 
We either can stay in the cage or we can follow him. If you stay in the cage, you'll miss the most unbelievable and wonderful adventure. In fact, friends, can we say that our, the disciples didn't just live an exciting life, they turned the world upside down. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about exciting. Yeah. And I, let me just ask you this morning, as we move quickly toward wrapping it up, if you're focused on your responsibilities, God wants you to know that he's called you to something greater. If you're, if you're worried about disrupting your plans or your routine, are you exchanging that adventure with God for a new cage in a zoo? If you're focused on your assumptions or your excuses like, I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm underqualified, I'm overqualified, it's too late, it's too soon, and the list goes on and on. Are you with me? The most important question is, are you putting a ceiling on what God wants to do in your life? What God wants to do in your neighborhood? What God wants to do in your city? If you're focused on guilt, oh, you got it. Remember, the devil hasn't changed his tactics since the Garden of Eden. He wants to stop what God is doing in your life and keep you focused on your past sins. And Jesus went to the cross so that you and I would understand how completely forgiven we are. Yeah. Past, present, and future sins are forgiven. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Go ahead and let that get, get deep in your spirit friends, and don't allow yourself to stay focused on the cage of the guilt that your flesh and other people and Satan will try to bind you up with. If you're focused on failure, this is where a whole lot of lives get transformed, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes our plans have to fail so that God's plans can succeed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about fear? If you're, if you're focused on fear, then can I encourage you this morning to make a little adjustment in your life and stop living like the purpose of your life is to arrive safely at the mortuary? <laughs> Come on, Bob. Come on. Another great missionary friend of mine is a missionary in Guadalajara, Mexico. He's been, he's been shot at, he's been, I don't know, stabbed, mugged, robbed, gunpoint, knife point, and he's there still doing it, still going, still serving. And, he's, and he, I love this one liner, he says, he said, John, I, I just believe that I'm bulletproof until God says it's time to come home. He says, no, I don't go being silly. I don't go, you know, taking advantage of God's grace and protection. But I am not going to stop doing what the Lord has called me to do. Amen. Praise the Lord. For Amen. fear or for anything else. Amen. Hallelujah. In fact, friends, the Holy Spirit is looking for daring people who are willing to say, God, I am open to the new adventure. Whether it's a, a new gift of the Spirit that God is calling you to exercise in your life. Whether it's a new gift of ministry that God is calling you. Whether it's just baking a pie, taking it to your neighbor. Or maybe, maybe you want to go to Sherry's and buy a pie, take it to your neighbor. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe you know one of the great cooks in this congregation you want to pay them to bake a pie for you. And then take it to me. <laughs> no, thanks for being so much fun. <laughs> or maybe maybe not pies, maybe cookies is your thing. Yeah, okay, right. But God will use those things to open doors. Open lives. 